Hi friends, this is Susie, your Candy Crush Guru. It is June 30th, 2023, and I am here to talk about the Candy Cup Summer Edition Final Event. If you find these videos helpful, I'd ask that you consider liking and subscribing. So, it's here. For those of you who have made it in and have your own particular strategy, congratulations and good luck. I hope that you get the top prize. That's the first reason I'm here, is to encourage everybody who has made it in to keep going. The second reason I'm here is to talk about strategy, because there's a particular strategy that I use. I wouldn't say I recommend it, but I display it, I demonstrate it, and it's situational, and I don't think it applies in the final event. It's not for this situation, and I don't want people who have been following my strategy to think that it's going to work here. I don't think it will. So let's go through and discuss things here. First of all, uh, Candy Cup, Summer, Final. Welcome, it's time to get ready for a Candy Cup Summer Collect Green Cup Candies to qualify to the final. No, they did not upgrade their graphic. 30 party boosters to win. There's no ticket here. We don't get a ticket. This is it. This is the final. It's the end. That's pretty funny that they didn't take that out. Well, on mine anyway. On other platforms, they may have known to do that. There are different developers on different platforms. Anyway, let's look at some of the rules here. The final stage started in the wee hours this morning, and it goes basically for two days. All day Friday, all day Saturday, and then at 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time is when it ends. So you have to convert the time so you know exactly when it ends for you. Although, once you get into the event, there is a countdown clock. Now, here's something particularly interesting. There's a claim end time. Let's say you spend two days going like crazy. You win. You know you win. You go to sleep, you know, with half an hour left, but you're three million ahead of the last person, and you're confident you win. And then because you worked so hard, you decide, I'm going to take a three-day break. I'm going to wait until after the holiday. Uh, I'm going to, you know, just relax and not sign into Candy Crush. That would be a huge mistake. You would have wasted those two days because you only have 24 hours to claim. So if you're up at 3 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time and you get it right away, good. But if you aren't and you skip a day, you might have worked for nothing. So be really careful. You only have 24 hours to claim your prize. I think that's kind of lousy, but I don't make the rules. All right, so that's important. But then let's also talk about how they do things. Let's go compare the qualifier to the final. In the qualifier stage, players are randomly put into groups of 10 players, and you just have to be one of the top five in order to win to go to the next stage. I applied the slacker approach. I didn't want to start on the first day and have, what, was it three or four days of playing against really, really aggressive players who signed in right away and got millions and millions of points. I waited until, or I tried to wait until the event was almost ended. I, on some of these, I think I accidentally signed in earlier than I intended to. Uh, but my idea was always to sign in late, get in a group of slackers, and make it to the top of you know, just a group of people who didn't really put much effort into it, which wouldn't take very much. So that worked fine. But notice for the final stage, it says players will be evenly distributed across 10,000 final stage leaderboards. The top one player per leaderboard will be a winner and be rewarded with the grand prize and be crowned a Candy Crush Saga Candy Cup Summer Champion. You're not literally crowned a champion. No one has ever crowned me a champion for anything in Candy Crush. But the grand prize is nice because that is 30 party poppers and those are valuable. Now for those who reach the top five but don't get that top slot, so slots two, three, four, or five, you will also receive some in-game rewards. And they've been fairly generous, I think, uh, with the players. I don't know what you would get for fifth position, but hopefully it's more than just a color bomb. Not quite sure. So even if you can't make it to the top, there is still some reward if you want to do that. And that might be what I'm going for is one of the top five slots. 
because I think it might be hard to get into the very top slot, but I don't even know if I'll get into the top five because the way this is set up doesn't play to my strengths of being a slacker <laughs> because here's what happens. Well, it says there that players are going to be evenly distributed across 10,000 final stage leaderboards. I can see two ways of them doing that. The first way I don't think is very likely, but I don't know. I have no idea how they run things. Uh, the first one is where my first theory, uh, which isn't a strong theory, is where they take the first 10,000 people and those people... Uh, not first 10,000, let's say first... Uh, I don't know how many people they plan to have in there, but let's say the first uh, 20,000, maybe they, they expect more. They take 20,000 people, they stick it in one board. The next 20,000 they stick on the next board, so on and so forth. Well, that's hard because then they have to kind of predict how many people are going to be there. Uh, and so I don't think that they run it that way. I don't think that they have a set number of players like they do here for the semifinals. There were 30 players. That's not what it sounds like here. What it sounds like is they've got 10,000 boards and they do it in, in a round where the first person gets on the first board, the 50th person gets on the 50th board, the 10,000th person gets on the 10,000th board. The 10,000 and first person gets put back on that first board and it just keeps rotating around that way. So in my slacker approach, it would be great if I could predict exactly when to enter to get onto that 10,000th board. Those are likely to be the least aggressive people, theoretically. Maybe not. Uh, you know, it just takes one person who has a spark of initiative uh, and then everything is gone. Um, but then, you know, the other problem is what happens if you're not the 10,000th person, but that 10,000th first person? Then you're put back in that first board, which is most likely to be very assertive people. Here's the other thing. There are so many people who play Candy Crush. I'm sure that 10,000 people have already signed in and started playing. So those leaderboards are already set and people are already earning those green trophies. And so if I wait until day two to jump in, I'm going to be jumping in on boards that have really well-established people already. So that would be a bad choice to wait. So what I'm going to do is wait <laughs> because I'm not afraid to make a bad choice when it comes to Candy Crush. Sure, I would love to get 30 party poppers or even some sort of reward at the end, but I, I'm not willing to sacrifice two days of my life in order to get those. The event isn't important to me enough in order to do that. And especially because it's an event, it's not competing against myself. It's not, I achieve this goal, I win. It's, I compete against people and I don't know what they are capable of. Will some of them have much faster computers? Probably. Will some of them have better strategies that I haven't thought of? Yeah, probably. Will some people use means that I would not use, like third-party cheats? Yeah, probably. And if I'm in a group with those people, then my chances are shot. So I'm not willing to invest two days of my life. Am I still going to participate? Most likely, yes, I plan to. I plan to kind of open up things tomorrow, see how it goes, play a little, uh, see what I can do, but I'm not going to be super aggressive. And if in the very beginning it looks like I'm not going to win, I'm not going to invest a whole bunch of time in it. If it looks like I have a shot, I might then alter how I approach the day. So that's my information. That's my advice. I hope, hope, hope that whatever you're doing, you have a great time with Candy Crush. Maybe you just have it going in the background and you're participating just because you're there, but you're working on other, uh, you know, oh, hold on. I didn't want to do that. Close. Let's go. So let's say you're going to play just because you also want to be doing the episode race because you want the gold or the Candy Royale. 
certainly if you can piggyback off of other events and play it and you know or you want you you have a goal to get to this particular level if you can bunch together why you're playing the event that makes things better so that if for some reason you can't make it to the one of those top slots at least you've made progress in another area all right that is it for me if you have any questions or comments feel free to put those below and as always thank you so much for watching bye bye